Hey there and welcome to Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to this video where we are going to be revising the chapter Forest Our Lifeline. And this is a part of our ongoing series on the channel which is Rapid Revision The Last Lap. So in this particular video, we are going to quickly summarize the chapter of forests, which talks about the importance of forests, why they are a dynamic living entity, and of course, we're going to look at the different layers of the forest and the products that we get from the forest. Now, of course, if you want an in-depth chapter explanation for the same, please do have a look at the one-shot video, which is available in the description of this video. So without wasting any more time, students, we are going to get started. Now, first and foremost, let us have a look at what is a forest. Now, if I were to ask you, what is a forest? You would tell me, ma'am, ma'am, there are these large areas which are covered with trees. There are many animals, many plants present there. And of course, we see that they have big, big trees, right? So when you talk about a forest, it is an area which is dominated by trees and vegetation and different kinds of animals. You see birds, you see animals on all fours, you find microorganisms living in the soil. And we see that it houses about 90% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. That means that maximum number of living organisms which are found on land are mainly seen in the forest. Now, if you talk about different kinds of forests that you see all around the world, you see that Amazon forests that are there, which are the largest area of forests that we find. And we often refer to them as the lungs of the world. Now, of course, when we talk about the fact that forests are covered with large number of trees and vegetation, what are some of the trees that we find here? Well, well, all the plants that we find are called as the flora of the forest. And some examples of trees that we see in forest areas include neem, babul, teak, shisham, bamboo and simal. Now, why is it important to go through these examples that are there in your textbook? Because in your exam, they may ask you identify which is a combination of a plant and an animal that you find in the forest which is why these examples are important for us to remember on an examination point of view next up we have the animals that we find in the forest now the animals that we find in the forest are called as the fauna in the forest and we see that lion elephants boars porcupines bison we see that monkeys rhinoceros jackals are all examples of animals that we find here and they're found deep in the forest that means that if this is my forest area we find these animals situated closer in the deeper regions and not in the peripheral regions while some animals are also found in the peripheral regions of the same. Now, of course, we see that one characteristic thing about forest are the tall trees, right? But does this mean that all forests have only one kind of trees or do they have different types? Well, I know you know the answer to this. Different types it is, yes? Because we know that the fauna that we find are of varieties. Some very tall trees, some very dwarf trees and some plants which are found at a, maybe let's say at a normal level, right? Which is why the trees that we find in the dense forest come in different heights. So first and foremost, before we delve into the different heights, you see that there are the tall ones, the middle ones, the bushes and the dry leaves on the floor. So before we get into the terminologies of the same, there is an important term that we need to understand. And that is the word crown. Now, when have you heard the word crown? You would have heard this word crown when we talk about kings and queens. And where is this crown present? On their head, right? So we find the crown on their heads. So similarly, if you talk about a crown of a tree, the crown of the tree is normally the part which we find above the stem or above the trunk, right? Now, trunk is the thick, broad stem of the tree and we see that the crown is the top part where from the uh, trunk we see that there are various branches that arise and the leaves act as a crown. And we see that in different trees, there are different types of crowns that we see that come in different shapes and sizes. Some which are spreading outwards, just like how we saw. Some which pretend to be like a vase. Some which are full crowned. Some which have a pyramidal shape. Some which are columnar. Some which are layered. And some which are fountain. 
Now, this is of course not there in your examination, but this is just some extra information for all of you. And based on this, we see that there are different layers in the forest. Now, we see that the topmost layer that we see is the emergent layer, right? Now, what do I mean by the emergent layer? These are the trees which are emerging or standing out, which means that these are very tall trees that tend to stand out and we are able to observe them. While the next layer that we have is the canopy layer. Now, the canopy layer includes a majority of the trees that we find in the forest. And we see that below the emergent layer, we find all the trees, right? So, we find all the trees and we see that all the leaves and the crowns, they are so close by. So, if I were to give you a top view, we see that all of them are so close by that it almost acts as a roof, right? Such that when there's harsh rains, or, you know, let's say there's harsh sunlight. We see that only a little bit of it will seep or go through the canopy layer. Which is why the layers below the canopy layer are a little more darker, right? Especially with respect to sunlight, if you see, because it almost acts as a roof. So, we see that most trees form a part of the canopy layer. Next, of course, we have the middle layer, which is called as the understory, which is mainly made up of shorter trees, right? So, these trees that you see right here are making the understory region or the understory layer and they are made up of very small trees. And end may be a forest floor. So, on the floor of the forest, what do we find? We find bushes, we find smaller trees and of course, we see that we also see that there are various dried leaves that are there. So, the four layers quickly to describe, we have the top emergent layer which includes few trees that are extremely tall and that stand out. Majority of the tall trees come under the category of the canopy layer. Then, of course, we have the understory layer ending with the forest floor. Now, why are we talking about all of these trees and, you know, why are we talking about the vegetation? Because like I said, forests are key to sustaining life. Because we know that plants in general are the producers, which means that they produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis and we call them as autotrophs. So they take in all the carbon dioxide and they utilize it for making their own food and they give it out or they make their own food, but they give out oxygen as a byproduct. Now we know that oxygen is extremely essential because we all need oxygen for respiration. Hence, in this particular case, if you see, plants are playing a very important role as producers. Now, apart from this, plants also carry out one very important function. And that is the function of transpiration, right? Now, what is transpiration? We know that transpiration is nothing but the loss of excess water from the aerial parts of the plant aerial parts of the plant through the process of evaporation, right? So, we know that when it's lost in the form of water vapor, we see that through transpiration it is lost. And what happens? All this water vapor will now be there in the atmosphere. Now, eventually once it reaches the upper layers of the atmosphere, the water vapor will condense and eventually result in the formation of clouds. And these clouds, as they become dense and dense, will eventually give rise or will let go of it or burst open and thereby we see precipitation taking place. And all the water that comes out through rain will then seep under the ground and reach the water table, which then is later absorbed by the plants and the same process continues. So, in this particular case, if you see, when you talk about forests, where we have a large number of trees, we see that all of them have a very important role to play in regulating the water cycle as well. Yes? Now, this is of course the role of plants. But what about the animals in the forest? Animals are also equally important. Because you see, animals are heterotrophs, which means that these animals cannot prepare their own food, but rather are dependent on other organisms or plants for their food. And in this case, we see that there are herbivores which consume plants, there are carnivores which consume other animals, and there are omnivores which have the ability to eat both. And if you see, all the animals in the forest are ultimately dependent on plants for food, directly or indirectly, right? Because if you look at the food chain that is given to us right here, we see that the herbivore is directly dependent on the plant. But the omnivores or the carnivores who are there are indirectly dependent. So, in this case, we see that there is a balance of population of animals maintained via the food chain and along with that, we also see that ecological balance is maintained. Yes? 
Now, of course, last but not the least, we see that we have decomposers as well. Now, of course, every living organism has a fixed lifespan, which means that they all are born and then eventually they will all die. Yes, but we also see that when these living organisms pass away, so let's take in the case of dried leaves. We know that trees may, you know, give out dead leaves or dried leaves or aging leaves in large quantities. But we don't see a pile of trees or, you know, like a huge pile of, let's say, dried leaves, you know, accumulating anywhere, right? But that, at least naturally, I would say. So in this case, what is happening to those leaves? Eventually, after some time, you don't see those leaves anymore that have fallen down. That is because of the role of decomposers. Now, decomposers include microorganisms like bacteria and fungi that break or that feed on the dead and decaying matter. That means that if there is a dead and decaying matter, they will act upon it and they will feed it and they will break it down, right? So they will break it down to simple soluble substances that they can consume. And eventually we see that all those nutrients will now be available in the soil. So in this case, if you see such organisms are what we call as saprotrophs that feed on dead and decaying organisms. Now in this case, if you see, all these nutrients are again essential for plants to grow, thereby they produce food for animals and thereby we see that eventually when they all die, the decomposers would feed on them. So in this particular case, what is happening, we see that in all these cases, we have so many living organisms which are found being interdependent on each other and we also see that they are all, of course, playing a very important role, right, which is why we say that the forest is said to be a dynamic living entity full of life and vitality. Yes? Now, an important concept that we have covered, which I will go through once again, is that of the food chain. What is a food chain? Food chain is a linear arrangement of organisms of who feeds who, right? So basically, if you see, if you have a plant, you have the, a deer would probably feed on the plant and a lion would feed on the deer. So this is a linear sequence of who eats who, right? But of course, it's not always going to be a set of linear sequences. The lion will not always eat the deer. The lion could eat a zebra. The lion could maybe eat a smaller animal, right? Or the deer is not just going to eat one kind of grass. The deer could eat different kinds of plants. Which is why we see that different food chains can be interconnected to each other, forming a food web. So what is a food web? Food web is nothing but several interconnected food chains forming a web-like structure as you can see. Now of course, why do we need forests, right? Why are we going through this whole chapter? What is the need behind having forests? Well, first and foremost, we see that we obtain various products from forests. We have plant-based products as well as animal-based products. Now, plant-based products include fruit, they include flowers, they include timber, medicinal herbs, spices and gum. While animal-based products mainly include honey and beeswax. Now, of course, when we talk about medicinal plants in the forest, we see that neem, we see that neem, tulsi, we see ashwagandha, brahmi are all some things which naturally grow in the forest, right? Then, of course, along with this, we see that forests are also rich in organic matter called as humus, right? Yes. So, we see that this is what is released to the, uh, these are, um, we see that this is released in, this organic matter that we find in the soil and gives the forest floor its dark color. So, again, if you see formation of humus that is there is again something wherein our soil microbes play an important role where decomposers convert dead plant and animal parts into humus. Yes? Now, along with this, quickly to recall why they are important, they say they serve as the lungs of the earth because of the fact that they do photosynthesis, give out large quantities of oxygen. They play an important role in the water, uh, water cycle as we have discussed and play a key role in rainfall patterns. They are home to various animals and plants. But of course, along with this, we also see that they are able to control floods, wherein we know that floods is a condition where there is overflow of water. Now, of course, how do they control floods? We know that when soil maintains its texture and maintains its porosity, we see that when there is excess of rainfall, we know that there is water that percolates into the soil and the roots of the trees bind the soil together so that they are not washed away. And along with that, they do 
by doing so they control soil erosion as well now what is soil erosion it is nothing but the removal of top soil right and we see that when the trees are present they hold the soil in position and do not allow the top fertile layer of the soil to be lost but of course over a period of time large areas of forest have been deforested so what is deforested what do we mean by the word deforested or deforestation nothing but the loss or removal of forest cover now this is because of that because of the fact that there has been increasing demand for wood there is need for wood for construction of roads and buildings forest fires have contributed to large loss of forest cover and of course we need land in order to practice agriculture now this could be dangerous because eventually it can cause shortages of food for the tribal people and for the animals it can cause flood global warming it can get rid of habitat for so many animals it can lead to soil erosion and lastly it can make it it will make it to a point where the soil has lost its fertility thereby making it into a no longer cultivable land or a desert kind of land and this process is what we understand as desertification which is why now we know that forest needs to be conserved for all the reasons that we have just discussed so now i hope now this particular chapter has become easy if it has i have a quick homework question for all of you now i want you to name two animal based and plant based products that we get from forest so this is your homework question which i want you to let me know in the comments of this video and if you found this video helpful don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button on the channel because you know byju 628 has always got you covered so everyone if you enjoyed this session like the video share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button hoping to see you all very soon again up until then take care lots of love all of you and bye bye